Hi, I'm Dave Marsden of Cardiff Theosophical Society. This quick blast of theosophy is about the objectives and benefits of meditation. The extract read here comes from The Mental Body by Arthur E. Powell, taken from the chapter entitled Meditation. Arthur E. Powell's books are journalistic compilations of the writings of mainstream theosophists. All religions recommend meditation, and its desirability has been recognised by every school of philosophy. Just as a man who wishes to be strong uses prescribed exercises to develop his muscles, so the student of occultism uses definite and prescribed exercises to develop his astral and mental bodies. There are, of course, many kinds of meditation, just as there are many types of men. It is clearly not possible that one method of meditation can produce equally good results with all. Each person must find for himself the type of meditation which is most suited to him. Meditation has many objects, of which the principal ones are as follows. 1. It ensures that at least once each day a man shall think of high and holy things, his thoughts being taken away from the petty round of daily life, from its frivolities and its troubles. 2. It accustoms the man to think of such matters so that after a time they form a background to his daily life, to which his mind returns with pleasure when it is released from the immediate demands of his business. 3. It serves as a kind of astral and mental gymnastics to preserve these higher bodies in health and to keep the stream of divine life flowing through them. For these purposes it should be remembered that the regularity of the exercises is of the first importance. 4. It may be used to develop character, to build into it various qualities and virtues. 5. It raises the consciousness to higher levels so as to include the higher and subtler things. Through it, a man may rise to the presence of the divine. 6. It opens the nature and calls down blessings from higher planes. 7. It is the way, even though it be only the first halting step upon the way, which leads to higher development and wider knowledge, to the attainment of clairvoyance, and eventually to the higher life beyond this physical world altogether. Meditation is the readiest and safest method of developing the higher consciousness. It is unquestionably possible for any man, in process of time, by meditation, say upon the Logos or the Master, to raise himself first to the astral and then to the mental levels. But, of course, none can say how long it will take, as that depends entirely upon the past of the student and the effort he makes. A man occupied in the earnest study of higher things is for the time lifted entirely out of himself and generates a powerful thought form in the mental world, which is immediately employed as a channel by the force hovering in the world next above. When a body of men join together in a thought of this nature, the channel which they make is out of all proportion larger in its capacity than the sum of their separate channels. Such a body of men is, therefore, an inestimable blessing to the community amidst which it works. In their intellectual studies they may be the cause of an outpouring into the lower mental world of force which is normally peculiar to the higher mental. If their thought deals with ethics and soul development in its higher aspects, they may make a channel of more elevated thought through which the force of the buddhic world may descend into the mental. They are thus able to cause influence to be radiated out upon many a person who would not be in the least open to the action of that force if it had remained on its original level. This, in fact, is the real and greatest function of, for example, a lodge of the Theosophical Society. Please note that all my quick blasts of theosophy are presented as ideas for consideration. Thank you.